Okay, hi guys. Hi guys. <laughs> so welcome to One Voice's very first table talk. We're so glad that you could join us. I'm Janina, and this is the team. Uh, JJ. Yeah, I teach a Chikina. And <laughs> why? That's it. Wait, where, do you, where do you teach? <laughs> Say where you teach. ACTS. Hmm? Grande. What, what does it stand for? Asian Christian Theological School in college. Okay. <laughs> Did you guys catch that? <laughs> I am Pauline. Uh, I'm a speech therapist. I work at Hope uh, Community Care and Kids Speak. So I'm a speech pathologist by day, writer the rest of my life. Okay. That's so nice to hear. Yeah. As you can see, this is extremely informal. But the topic that we are going to discuss this afternoon is something that we believe is very critical to uh, the young people of, of, of now. And uh, this topic is, uh, what is my purpose? Yes. Purpose! Purpose! <laughs> Such a heavy word, isn't it? Big, big yeah, it's word. pretty, pretty deep. What, what, is, what does purpose mean anyway? Actually, that was my first question. What is purpose to you? Yeah. Like, like for this thing, this doesn't exactly have a purpose, but mm -hmm. the main purpose that it has is to fill up our table with something pretty. Yeah. So that's a good question <laughs> though, like what is our purpose? Is it something that's profound or is it something, well, do we just exist? Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. 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 So I've been questions in Kasimaka youth when I was in college. You grew up in a Christian background. And then suddenly you meet people who are part of the uh, a different kind of thought. And many of them are saying that we just exist because um, of how the world is just formed in randomness, you know? I've also met a lot of Christians who have thoughts on existing because of a higher purpose or because the world is too organized for it not to be created. Mm -hmm. So the purpose of serving God in life or something mm -hmm. like that. That's the most pressing question when it comes to anything, really, is purpose. So, uh, what are your thoughts? So I think that when you start asking yourself, what is my purpose? You start really trying to figure out, like, why am I here on Earth? Why, why was I born? You know, like, yeah. am I made for something? Am I made to be someone? But the question of whether I, I am supposed to serve a higher being, that comes into play. But I think really, like, if you go, if I remove all the, the cotton candy, you know, it will be, why me? Who am I? Why here? Like, why? Why this? What do you think, why? It happens okay. that his name is why. Alam mo, sarili mo, na may purpose ka, pero um, may kailangan kang gawin. Ginawa ka bilang isang tao. Hindi ba? Tulad ng cellphone. Ginawa siya bilang isang cellphone pang contact or pang tawag. Kahit gamitin ko siyang plansya, kung paano ako magplansya, hindi pa rin maayos yes. yung plansya. So, ganun din tayo. Kailangan natin alamin kung ano talaga yung purpose natin. So, Second question, paano natin malalaman yung purpose natin? Yeah, I think this is where we now have to look at uh, our Creator. Because if we believe that we were created, then we should go to our Creator and ask, Okay, what am I made for? Who am I? The very first thing that uh, questioning our purpose should be leading us towards the big who, which is God. And what do you think, Pat? Um, I feel like questions like that overlap a lot with philosophy mm -hmm. and with how everyone, let's say, you know, outside of our circle thinks. Because yeah. I've also um, met people, and even me, because I've had my face of being an agnostic before, mm -hmm. and I've had those questions as well. And for me, I feel like, one, I feel the peace of knowing that I do have a creator, mostly yes. because of how everything is unexplainably organized. Yeah. <laughs> Even if it seems to be in some form of disorder, but it's still there. And another one is, in terms of asking the creator, what, who, what is my purpose? I think you'd be right in asking who he is yeah. also. Because if you knew who he is, then you'd have an idea of who you're supposed to be. Um, for me, I think, I would say that you do need to find your purpose in the Creator first. 
and I would find my purpose in God first. You know, when I was going through that phase of like being an agnostic, somehow I found I realized it was a default setting in humans to somehow always have that nagging question. You know, what is my purpose? And I feel like that question wasn't put there by accident. Yes. I feel like everybody has that nagging question of like, am I worth something? Is there a meaning to my life? I mean, that's why you have philosophers who think that finding meaning is in giving, is in loving others, is in serving others. We're always in the constant search for meaning. And I feel like the Creator actually put that there in people's hearts because you know it's a god-sized question that was there by default because maybe you were actually meant to talk to that creator Mm. maybe you were actually meant to find out more about that creator that's why we have questions there i'd concur with what kuya y said that we are supposed to go to the creator first to find out what our purpose really is so uh those of you viewing (laughs) one thing that you can ask yourselves is uh, have i gone to my creator Huh? To ask him uh, what exactly your purpose is. It's very important that you do so. Now, um, on my end, I remember when I was young, because you know, I grew up in a Christian home, and I remember not exactly loving everything about life. In fact, it was rather depressing. I don't know about you, but uh, when I was around 10 or 11, I told myself that, hey, this is it. I'm okay with 10, 11 years of existence. I can already die. I mean, uh, were you like that? Were you like that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah? yeah? Okay. Yeah, All right. High five, JJ. <laughs> I feel like everyone has gone through their emo uh, phase. Yeah. yeah. That's, everyone has their yeah, yeah. Eyes, it's not inside. Everyone has had their emo phase. And then, you know, later on, because it didn't exactly diminish quickly. Like when I was 15, 14, uh, I started... Um, really undergoing something difficult and all the more i was like hey i think i can die now you know so i was really pretty depressing as a younger person something changed when i when i was in my my late teens and the early 20s because this was the time when i started doing something new you might be surprised uh, because it's very very common it's just that we don't see the power of this and this is what i call dreaming Okay. okay. Yeah. And when I say dreaming, it's not like sleeping and then dreaming something in your uh, REM, but uh, really dreaming of dreaming of what I could do in life. Did anything like that happen to you? Like, did that dreaming enter the picture of you, or was there something in you, like especially you, JJ, because you mentioned yeah. that you were also depressed. <laughs> you know, like, um, um, was there anything that shifted for you? I uh, first off, when I was a uh... When I was in high school, was it? Okay, background to those people watching. Okay, I didn't necessarily grow up with a dad during high school, because he passed away when I was like 14. So that kind of messes me up with your identity. Now, the biggest problem that I had with existence, or at least purpose, was that everything that you see around you, everything that is physical, the biggest question that I've always had in my mind was, is this really it in life? Like everything that you see, everything that you taste, everything that you touch, all the physical manifestations, all the rewards, the gratitude that you have, is this all there is to the world? When my dad passed away, of course, I lost that sense of feeling for everything. I didn't want to have anything to do with life anymore. So it's not that I wanted to kill myself, it's just that I lost my appetite for life. And then what really shifted my, my view when it came to uh, purpose was when, when I read Hebrews for the first time, Hebrews 11, or was it 12? And for the hope set before him, this was like the verse about Jesus Christ dying on the cross. The hope set before him, he endured the cross, scorning a shame, yeah. Took me by surprise because for the first time in my life, I understood that me- the meaning of life simply sacrificial love. The fact that you're willing to give your life up for somebody, that in itself is the bra- like the greatest purpose in my life. Because when I lost my dad, I, 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 that's when I started realizing what it really means to love someone, you know? Especially those who you lost. Like, um, you become numb to other things when you, when you have it all the time, but when you lose something, you become more thankful. It's like food. When you're hungry, you, res- you, you like food more. It tastes better. So to me, purpose is just simply sacrificial love. If you find someone you love, like not necessarily in a ro- romantic relationship, this is about uh, agape, that kind of love. If you find that in your life, that's enough for you to live. 
Because that was the last thing that my dad like imparted to me before he actually passed away was to just take care of the people I love, to take care of the people that I care for. No, no matter how hard life gets, that's what will keep me moving forward. I was never the kind of kid who was satisfied with anything until I realized how important it is to not lose somebody, mm -hmm. someone important to you. So yeah, <laughs> you know my history. Yeah, I want to pounce on something you said. Pounce like Tiger Rar. <laughs> yeah, but you mentioned the uh, the verse of uh, the joy being the joy set before the Lord, and uh, when you have something to look forward to, it's very very strong. Uh, there's a proverb that says that without vision, a people perish. So if you are someone who lives a life of routine, but you have nothing set before you, nothing nothing to look forward to, no vision, no dream, you know you're inevitably going to find life meaningless. You're gonna feel, oh, so what is this? Is this all there is to life? And if we connect this back again to what we were earlier talking about when we mentioned that we have to go back to our Creator, we have to go and ask, oh, God, what was your dream for us? What was your purpose for us? Yeah. It's, it's also part of being a branch connected to the vine. If you are a, a pear okay, or an apple, you grow all the more as a pear, as an apple, if you're connected as to, to the tree, you know, as opposed to if you're like uh, prematurely disconnected and you're like, you're just this small, like a little seedling looking still like a mango, you know, something like that. So it's really good that we connect back to what God's purpose for us is, yes. right? And the, this is important because we can go back to Genesis because that was when God created us, right? Pow, you remember anything in the Bible, like in Genesis, where God really set something like his dream for us. Mm -hmm. I'd like to believe we weren't just created to be ornaments. Yes. Um, okay, you know how like some people think that we have a God who created us and then just kind of like left the creation hanging to just spin in continual existence? I feel like that kind of goes against the inherent questions that people have about having more meaning, having more purpose. It's more than just being a mere ornament or it's mm -hmm. more than just mere existence. If a God who is creative enough to put so much detail in DNA and science and physics and chemistry would just leave it as that to exist, then I feel like his art in itself would have been so sayang. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. It would have been so sayang. So if yeah. God was epic enough to create something as wonderful as creation, it mm. should have had function. Yes. And form and function always go together. Yes. So with, what, with how God created us, so he kind of had a form for us, right? So he created uh, the heavens, the earth, and then I'm going to skip here to Genesis 1 verse 26 to 28. Mm -hmm. So he says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Um, so I'm going to stop here, but if you've noticed how God and how he reiterates certain words, mm. that actually adds emphasis to what he's trying to say. So when he says, so God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created him. That's like double, you know, double emphasis on what our form actually is. And that is being made in the image of God. God. Okay, yeah. so if you think about it, God kind of like put his fingerprint on us you, you know mm. kind of like how JJ is made in the image of his father yeah. his daddy like he looks sure. like his dad got the dark hair got the light skin yeah. so we are made in his image and so God in all of his entirety and all of his beauty and all of his grace and all of his power he made us in his image so we are like him and the function is to be like him yeah which is to rule right mm. like, Mind blown. So basically, <laughs> because he actually uses that word. He uses that yes. word. He says, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. So we have the characteristics of what God is like, mm. the creativity, the ideas, the innovation. We have that. We have that inherent in us. For what purpose? He says here, let them rule mm. over creation. And if you think about the word rule, what does that denote? Does it mean existing? more than existing it actually kind of adds some epicness to what your <laughs> right it's pretty epic it adds some yeah. epicness to what your purpose actually is you were designed originally to rule over yeah, the world yeah, yeah. kind of like how uh, he were i kind of want to touch on that yeah okay so this is pretty awesome um 
Actually, I, I I got this from Bible Project, but I hope that you guys will like you know give me grace for this. It's like my revelation from Pastor Tim, uh, a revelation from Pastor Timaki. So I I, I like um, what changed my mind about like purpose actually started out from idolatry, right? So let's go back to this verse, right? Exodus twenty, uh, what's that verse? Yeah, twenty three. There you go. Exodus twenty three. You shall have no other gods before me. Now actually, uh, what what blew my mind was that we. We human beings are actually passionate about ruling. Like what you said, right? We're not just ruling, we're passionate about it. Yeah. So, um, what does that mean? There are people who are pursuing money. There are people who are pursuing career, pursuing jobs, you know? That's what they find, that's what their purpose is in life. And I respect that. No, no problem with that, no problem whatsoever. You can, you can all earn all the money in the world, become the greatest, whatever. But here's the thing, that will all fade away, right? Yeah. That's why God had to say, you shall have no other gods before me, because all of those things are meaningless. Okay. Why am I saying that? That's why we're created in the image of God. It's because we are the image of God. That's why we're not supposed to have any other idols that we're all passionate about. Like if you look at all the other religions in the world, they're all about, you know, I'm passionate about this God. I'm passionate about serving this kind of, uh, this kind of idol in my life, whatever. And that's like subconscious. But deep down in us, we really want that. And for God to say that our purpose is to serve you know the world to serve him and to serve other people that kind of like shifts shifts everything right yeah you start un un understanding your identity as a person your value that you are created in the image of god to be passionate in working for other people and for god it goes back to that verse where jesus had to say you know like the most important the golden rule is to love god and love other people okay uh, isn't that like am i saying it properly uh, anyway like clear clear it up na lang. Yeah. <laughs> the things we really have to be really clear about is the phrase image of God. So um, to take off from what JJ said, when you say the image of God, so we really have to get this thing clear because one, we are not God. Yeah, when the Bible says course. image of God, so even just the word image, image means picture, likeness, reflection, right? So it doesn't necessarily make the image of God, God, okay? Sure. And so we have to ask ourselves now, what is God like? You know, what, what makes him who he is? What are his values? What is his character? Because there, we start to see that, wait a minute, I'm here on earth to be like him. I'm here on earth to practice love and kindness, to grow in gentleness, to grow in, 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 um, in, in loving people. So now, life will, will not just be all about yourself. You start going, okay, my life, my life is about being someone whom god wants me to be and number one there it's to be like him huh? yeah for sure. so so there so th there's a character portion and then as pao mentioned a while ago um authority rule dominion if you're young it's hard for you uh, to really embrace the concept of dominion because you're like oh, how can i rule huh? i'm still young yeah, you know, uh, let the old ones rule. They're CEOs, they're bankers, they're professionals, but me, I'm still in school. Now, this is where I believe uh, you can look at the hints, the clues, you know, the little things that God deposited in your life. And these are your gifts, these are your uniqueness. You know? So, for example, just for example, JJ, he knows how to do digital art. Yeah. I don't do that. Why? It's really magnificent when it comes to Tagalog. If I were to speak like one whole par paragraph in Tagalog, this thing will be comedic, you know? <laughs> wow. She has a way with organization. Like, she, she really knows this first, that first, this first. In fact, when I, when I forget things, I'm like, Pao, can you please remind me? La, 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 la. So she's like really good with these kinds of things. And, and it's what makes JJ, Y, and Pao them. And as for me, you know, I like writing, I like dreaming stuff, I like, I like teaching, and, uh, and aside from gifts, you know, we can say that the, our experiences really are, are just ours. Like for example, even if the four of us were students at one point, uh, I can say that my life as a student was different from from Pao's life. Even if at one point, you know, like she came from the same school that I did, which was also JJ school. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like everything's interconnected, you know. But but what I'm trying to say is, you know, we all have our giftedness, we all have our uniqueness, we all have our stories to share that make us who we are. 
And uh, this actually contributes to our purpose. Because uh, JJ, for example, God did not call him to be a ballerina. Ballerina. <laughs> yes, thank you, Paul. Because oh, one, man. he's clumsy with his feet, right? But he's. Oh. Okay, whoops. <laughs> You're not yeah, offended, yeah, are you? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> but he can draw, he can make digital art. I can draw ballerinas. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm about. So that you know, th- our our uniqueness, our giftedness, our stories, our experiences contribute to with our purpose. Okay. So uh, why do you have anything to add to that? Sa akin, that's a verse na binasa is ginawa tayo ni Lord. Lahat tayo create. Pero yung pagkaka create niya sa tao kakaiba. Mm. Kasi lahat sinabi niya lang eh. Pero yung pagdating sa tao hinubog niya pa eh. Yes. Oo pa siya. Ibig sabihin, binigyan niya ng oras. Ibig sabihin, parang tayo, pag nag enjoy tayo magsulat, lalong gumaganda yung sulat natin. Pag nag enjoy tayo mag-aral, lalong nagmaganda yung performance natin sa pag-aaral. Katulad din na, niya sabi na, kinreate niya tayo, isa yung sa purpose natin, kung bakit tayo nandito, is maging katulad niya. Mm-hmm. To be like him. Yun yung unang purpose ng bawat isa. Paano ka magiging katulad niya kung hindi mo siya kilala? Tulad niya, kunyari ako, favorite ko yung artist or artist ako, sabihin natin si Paul Walker. Paano kung siya magiging kaparehas kung ang ginagaya kong image is si Morgan Freeman? Medyo magkaiba, <laughs> di ba? So malayo, wala yung, wala, wala, walang dating, hindi nila akong makikilala as kagaya, ginagaya ko si Paul Walker. So ganun din tayo, yun yung una nating purpose. Alamin natin is kung sino ba talaga yung creator natin? Ano ba talaga yung mga ginawa niya? At ano po yung gagawin niya sa buhay natin? Mm-hmm. So, tulad nga niyan. Second is to rule. Pag sinabing, oh, you rule, may, ano ka dito eh, uh, parang sa Tagalog ka, parang nagahari. Mm-hmm. Nagahari ka. So, ibig sabihin, yung mga kasama mo, merong respeto sa'yo. At tinitingnan ka as iba sa kanila. So, ganun din tayo. Dumatay, lumalabas dun yung pagiging leadership. Leadership ng bawat isa. So, yun lang. In Psalm 139, it talks about how God fashioned us in our mother's wombs. And the word fashion, you have that sense of fingers really molding us, you know, um, making sure that uh, we come out the way that, that God wants us to be. And uh, when God fashioned us, it wasn't just simply like sl- slipshod, but he did it with so much love. Right? In fact, in Psalm 139, it also talks about how, how God wrote our days before they came to be. And all the more, if God wrote our days, all the more we have to go to Him and go, God, what did you dream for today? Like, how should today be? How should my future be? You know, what is your view? Like, how, what, what are your thoughts? So, yes, no God, no God, <laughs> period, no God. Okay. And, uh, and this one, because no? I mentioned God loving us while, while forming us. So we can say that we are creatures made of love, yeah. made from love, made for love. Huh? Because God is love. Because God yeah. is love. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know? And again, we're like him. So, huh. so we, we, it's, it's really our default setting you know, to gravitate towards love. So uh, it's, no, it's no wonder that when Jesus was asked the question, um, what is the greatest commandment? What did he answer? You remember what he answered? Love the Lord your God with your heart, with your soul, soul with all your mind, mind, with all your strength. Yes. And love others as you love yourself. Love your yes. neighbor as, you, as love you love yourself. yourself. Okay. So you know what? When we talk about life, we cannot extricate ourselves from that. We cannot extricate ourselves from loving, from being people of love, loving God and loving others. Yeah? Because if you look at the other dreams of God, which is really everywhere in the Bible, like for example, uh, the Bible also says that God doesn't want anyone to perish, but everyone to come to re- repentance, right? Remember that? Okay, what, what, what seems to be the root of that? Love, because huh? yeah. for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You know, so when we talk about purpose, identity, and even destiny, you know, we have to embrace love. So we are people of love, people 
who must conform, who must, <laughs> who are made in the image of God, in His likeness, made in love. That's it? Okay, so guys, as we end this, uh, this is a question that I want you to ask yourself. Why am I alive? With this, we end our very first table talk it was Yay. such a pleasure <laughs> just discussing this issue and we hope that we see you again in our next table talk bye, bye. <laughs>